I'm excited to now call up our next speaker, um, also a leader in this movement, because we know we are conservatives and liberals, but also independents who are united around ending the corruption of big money in politics. Tiani Coleman is the head of independent voters here in New Hampshire. And would you join me in welcoming Tiani Coleman to the stage? Um, on behalf of New Hampshire independent voters, I am very proud to be an ally. We are very proud to be an ally of the New Hampshire rebellion of open democracy. And we're very happy to see this group of people because it's filled with sincere, dedicated patriots that are committed to ending the corruption and the corrupting influence of big money in politics. Not only that, but I think the best part about this group is that they are a true grassroots organization. Um, I think that a lot of these groups that we see out there, I've penned them the term gynos, which is grassroots in name only. <laughs> but the New Hampshire Rebellion is a true grassroots organization, and because of that, and as you've seen here in New Hampshire, it has really caught fire and it's spreading and it's not going to be stopped. And if it weren't for the snowstorm today, I think we'd have a lot more people in here. But I think you can tell the power of this organization and of this group because of what we're seeing in the national campaigns right now. We're seeing that the candidates that are at the top of the polls happen to be the candidates that are not accepting the big money and the candidates who seem, or at least appear, to be uh, not influenced by it. So, thank you, and I wanted to also put out a hand for the vision and sacrifices of Granny D, as well as the profound work of Larry Lessig and the leadership of Dan Weeks and so many other people to be able to be part of this. And I also wanted to thank Justice Broderick. Um, I was the chair of the Salt Lake County Republican Party when Governor Huntsman, the co-chair of No Labels, was elected governor of Utah. And I had the fine opportunity of being able to work with him. And that was a good opportunity. And we, the independent vote, New Hampshire independent voters, are supportive of No Labels and their basic idea of creating vital common goals and working together to solve problems. And I went to the No Labels uh, convention and I was able to see a great opportunity where there were independents, Republicans, and independents all gathered together, and Democrats all gathered together to be able to talk about the issues. And that's the same here. Here at this gathering we have Republicans, Democrats, and independents talking about the issues we may not all agree on exactly how we're going to solve the, camp the campaign finance problem, but we do all agree on some, of the d on some of the basic goals. We all know that the constant need for candidates and public officials to fundraise is keeping them from being able to do the people's work. We know that the fact that they owe their past and future elections to the big money donors is keeping them from paying much attention to the concerns of the average citizen. That the influence of super PACs and lobbyists in elections is drowning out all the other voices in what is supposed to be a free market of ideas. Now some of you might wonder why in the world I'm up here talking as President of New Hampshire Independent Voters if I was Chair of the Salt Lake County Republican Party. So I think I'll try to explain that. I'll, I'll explain to you why a die-hard Republican is now a die-hard independent. <clears throat> My political life, I was an ideological conservative, but I was pragmatic. I was elected vice chair of the Salt Lake County Republican Party as the only officer elected from the establishment ticket in what was the first dissident grassroots takeover of party leadership. 
after two years of grueling, hard, thankless work, I thought I was done. But when nobody was willing to challenge the new chair for re-election, I ran against the incumbent chair and won with the coalition of establishment and grassroots Republicans. I was still partial to the establishment Republicans, but I was committed to giving all sides a fair shake in the process. <clears throat> now to make a long story short, my eyes were very opened through my experience in insider politics. I was forced to constantly listen, listen to the various warring factions, and I found that Utah's caucus system of nominating candidates was prone to abuse. Not only did I find that the caucus system of electing candidates could allow for a well-organized vocal minority to take over the party and get their candidates elected against the will of the people, but it likewise allowed for a tyranny of the majority to completely suppress the votes, the voting rights of the minority. Neither option is democratic nor viable. Now, as background, Utah uses a caucus system to elect their state and uh, county officials. And so the people go to, to their neighborhood caucuses and they elect delegates to vote on their behalf. It's different than Iowa. The way it works there is the delegates are not bound in any way when they're elected. And so they have the sole discretion to wine and dine with the candidates, though there's not much wine going on in Utah. And then they get to vote on every office at the party convention. Also, all of the elected and public officials and top party leaders are automatic delegates in the convention. This, this, is, the, this is the way they do the elections for Congress and Senate, for US Congress and Senate as well, and governor. Any candidate who can get 60% of the vote at convention avoids a public primary entirely. Now they are in the process of changing this, but that's the way it's been for years and years. So they have no public primary election if they can get 60% in the party convention. So as you can imagine, there's a fierce, constant battle for control of the party. After listening to constant badgering from people, I started to open my eyes and I started to see the conflict of interest that's inherent in having parties as the gatekeepers for our public elections. Yet they're deemed private organizations allowed to have their own rules about whether conventions or primaries are open or closed, about whether they will have automatic superdelegates, and relying on funding from lobbyists, PACs, and big dollar donations. Now, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I used to think that it was paranoia to be worried about the influence of lobbyist donations. That's changed. <laughs> As I started calling for reforms to the caucus system and I researched the best alternatives, I saw that the problems in Utah were made tenfold worse by the fact that Utah is a one-party state. The Republican Party in Utah holds every statewide public office, every spot in their federal congressional delegation, and a supermajority in the state legislature. And they have straight ticket voting in the general election. People can just go to the ballot, pull a lever, election over, once one poll. So, most general elections in the state are not competitive at all, which means that all of the action happens in the primary election, and in their case, in their convention. Candidates and office holders are only accountable to the party stalwarts, and they can completely ignore the rest of the people. With party control of the redistricting process and more, the system allows parties to secure monopolies. Not only does this lead to bad policy, but when our public officials have no real check by the people, it leads to corruption. Two former Utah Republican Attorney Generals are currently under indictment for public corruption related to abuse of power and giving favors to campaign contributors. It's hard to convince entrenched interests to give up their power structure. So that's when I became an independent and decided to start fighting for electoral reform. Now, as a side note, I just wanted to mention that once I became an independent and broke away from the party box of thinking, my views on almost everything changed. 
So I certainly now see very valid points in both parties. I'm no longer afraid to talk to Democrats. <laughs> in fact, there's a very good chance I'll be voting for one in the co coming election on Tuesday. <laughs> so, um, so as Republicans, what we believe, I mean, excuse me, as independents, <laughs> by the way, I, I would mention too that, you know, we, we see this in so many issues. We see that when parties talk about, they talk about the, uh, free market of ideas and how it's so important and they're so afraid to do anything that might go against freedom and free market and it's really just a sub subterfuge for being able to do their cr corporate cronyism and to be able to help their donors. The same thing happens on the democratic side. They talk about the importance of trying to <clears throat> help the poor but a lot of times it also is a form of government cronyism that is really just trying to create a dependent base for their voting blocks. So this is going on in both cases and here in New Hampshire I think a lot of people have had their eyes open with the Northern Pass and with the pipeline as they have seen that a lot of the traditional party um, rhetoric doesn't hold true when it's actually affecting them and they see what's happening with the way the pipeline is, is coming through. So Independents see that ideology can be meaningless. It's just used as a weapon, as a form of control, because people can't think for themselves when they, think that they, when they just think based upon party ideology. We believe that it creates a false dichotomy, pitting one party against the other as the enemy to be taken down at all costs and used as a scapegoat to blame the other side when nothing's getting done in, done in Washington. Nothing's getting done on behalf of the people. Independents want to reform the system so that we can start to think in more intelligent, nuanced ways and fuse the best, of, the best ideas of both parties together and create win-win solutions. We want to truly solve the problems that have been around for decades. We want to solve them on behalf of we the people. Now there are many states that are one party states <clears throat> and they have closed primaries. Even though here in New Hampshire, we, we have open primaries and independents can go and they can vote in the primary on election day. When we choose a ballot, we still have to join a party. We join a party by choosing a ballot here in New Hampshire. And we can't, and in the state elections, we can't split our ticket and vote for the best candidate in each race. We have to choose one party or the other. We may like one candidate in the Democratic Party for one race and one party, one candidate in the Republican Party for another race, but we can't, we can't do that. We have to choose one party or the other. So we believe that our choices are being greatly limited by the party system that we have today and that nobody should have to join a party in order to participate in determinative elections. Our elections are public elections financed by the state and yet they're there and controlled by the party system. Now the Supreme Court has ruled that parties have a right of association to control who gets to vote in their primary if the primary is a party nomination. However, nothing in the Constitution requires that the preliminary round of the general election be a party nomination. We don't have to have state-funded party primaries. We can make the party endorsement process private and the public election process truly public. So as part of opening our democracy, New Hampshire independent voters support nonpartisan primaries where all candidates from all party preferences to no party preference can appear on the same primary ballot and all voters can vote on the same ballot. The top vote getters, regardless of party, advance to the general election. California, Washington, Louisiana, and Nebraska do this. And Arizona, Oregon, and Florida are pushing for initiatives to get this on the ballot. We should have that discussion here in New Hampshire and even talk about the possibility of using ranked choice voting so that in the general election, we can have more than two candidates advance. 
Our partisan election system, combined with big money, makes it nearly impossible for office holders to solve problems. It doesn't encourage the best office holders to run. All, I mean the best candidates to run. All citizens, regardless of party identification or money, should get a meaningful say in our democracy and in our elections. And when they do, candidates and office holders will be accountable to all voters, and not just to the most partisan or the most wealthy among us, leading them to act on behalf of we the people. So we hope that you'll go over to our table, sign our petitions. We have one also that's asking candidates to pledge not to take PAC money, because being an independent means that we are independent and we are looking for candidates who also act independently, that they act for the best of the people, they act for people over party, people over money, and try to make real solutions on behalf of we the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiani. Uh, Tiani, in addition to being a brilliant and wonderful advocate for the independent voters in New Hampshire, has walked uh, with New Hampshire Rebellion in the bitterest of cold. So she is a wonderful, wonderful person to have here.